Más de Guinea. Y esta la presentación al estilo de Martín. Que les guste y que disfruten de Celta de Vigo is one of the 11 Spanish clubs that has played for more than 50 seasons in the first division. They have also participated in the Champions League and eight times in the Europa League. The city of Vigo is primarily an industrial one with car factories and important shipyards, but its economy is also supported by the fishing and tourism sectors. Vigo is located in the province of Pontevedra, in the southern part of Galicia, and it has almost 300,000 inhabitants, making it one of the most populated cities in Spain. The airport is located 14 kilometers from the Balaida Stadium. In addition, it has a bus and train station connecting it with all the main Spanish cities. You can access the stadium on foot or by bus, as various bus routes go to the stadium from different points in the city. Vigo has a lot of good hotels. One of the best options is Hotel Lisperia. It is 700 meters from the Balaido Stadium and it's located in the heart of the business district next to Plaza America, which makes it an ideal location and it has all the facilities of a top-class hotel. The average price starts from 60 euros a night. For a similar cost, but more than two and a half kilometers from the stadium, is Hotel Eurostars Mar de Vigo. It is located in the heart of the city, in front of the river. The average price also starts from 60 euros a night. Another option is the Residencia Patostal, just over a kilometer from the stadium with an average price of 50 euros a night. In Vigo, you'll have a great time in a welcoming environment. There's only one danger about coming to Vigo, and I want to warn everyone who comes, once you visit, you'll want to stay here forever. Vigo is a city. Vigo is an extremely safe city, extremely safe. It's completely safe for anyone to walk through Vigo at any time of the day or night. Not only because everyone is friendly, but because crime rates are also practically non-existent. In Vigo, you can visit large sandy dunes nearby. You can also go to the CS Islands, which is an extraordinary spot. You can go to a mountain range, which is full of luscious vegetation, trees and nature. It's a unique environment. The Theus Islands are exactly the same as they were 20,000 years ago, 10,000, 2,000 years ago. No humans have interfered with them. We want people to inherit this environmental landscape. There are some absolutely extraordinary areas of the Theus Islands. Just coming to see the Theus is worth it.
My name is Eduardo Royan. I'm a journalist from Vigo and we're currently next to the sea. This city was born from the sea, lives for the sea. And the boats go from here to Cangas, Moana and the Cies Islands. Also, the big cruise ships dock here and the people from Vigo have fun walking around. If you want, we can go to Casco Bello, which is a historic area where the city first developed. Come with me. Well, we find ourselves in the part of town where oysters are served. It's a tradition in Vigo. Vigo is Europe's main fishing port, and the shellfish and fish are a delight. The rational thing to do here is to come to La Piedra and eat an oyster, which this gentleman will now prepare for us. Thank you, and bon appétit. If you haven't been to Vigo, if you've not tried the oysters, it's a sin not to try them. Rica, rica, buena, buena. Ostra, very good. Frex, frex. We're now in the Plaza de la Constitución. This is the heart of the city, where Vigo was born. The old fishermen's quarter started here and slowly expanded. There you can see the Santa Maria Con Cathedral. This is the old town hall. This is the city's old meeting point, a place where locals come for a glass of wine, to enjoy their terrazas and to spend some time. It's a very enjoyable place to be. This is the Plaza de la Princesa de Vigo, which is right next to the Puerta del Sol. This is kilometre zero for Vigo. This is where the city's main fiestas are held, the Reconquista and the Entroido. We come here to the city's hub to have fun. Let's go now and enjoy the wonderful views of Vigo. This is a coastal city full of viewpoints. Follow me as we go and check them out. This is the Paseo de Alfonso, one of many viewpoints in Vigo. From here you can see the estuary. I recommend you visit here and see all the other viewpoints from which you can enjoy Vigo's wonderful surroundings. There below is the Vigo fishing port, the busiest in Europe. We're a big player in the fish industry. We live off the sea and we're happy to do so. Breeding mussels is one of the main economic activities in Vigo. They use a floating wooden structure on which they place mussel seeds on long ropes. You open the shell and then you lift the mussel like this. They head off to fish at around four or five in the afternoon. They come back at two or three in the morning. They unload and sell fresh fish the following day. Most of the fish is reserved for fish shops and also fish sellers who drive around the nearby town selling the fish from their vans. We don't get many visitors from restaurants. The good thing here is how well it all tastes. The water and fish here is ideal.
Give what else does Vigo have to offer? Well, the local cuisine is second to none. We believe that the best shellfish can be found in Vigo. We're not boasting, it's true. The world's best shellfish is in Vigo. The local cuisine, which has several influences, is exceptional. It's a small, warm and intimate place. The most important thing is the final dish. We've tried to reflect our style in these three dishes, smoked sardine fillet and a light starter with roasted peppers. We use a little febrero cheese to turn it into a spread. There's also some fat and a special wafer made from rice. The fried wafer is very thin. Another star dish here are the steamed scallops, soya-based mayonnaise cream and rice tagliatelle. I'm gonna treat my mama fresh this. Ha-ha. And also some trout eggs, virtually uncooked, almost raw. We're a restaurant that mainly serves fish, shellfish and martino. We lightly grill the fish from the inlet before baking it in the oven. We have the sweet potato, which makes the dish even tastier. A small vegetable cream soup with a shellfish base. It's impossible to choose just one dish in Vigo. Vigo has the best cuisine in the world. Everyone has their own tastes, but Vigo has the best seafood around. The best shellfish you can have, the king crab, is simply superb. The best you can find in Vigo comes from the estuary. It's an incredible dish, and I recommend everybody tries it. I would say the shellfish, as it's the best our estuaries offer. The Galician estuaries are unique, thanks to the plankton, which the shellfish feed off. Here we have a selection of barbecued seafood. This is one of the most popular dishes here. There's a selection of boiled and grilled seafood, and each dish carries up to 11 different varieties. On top of the excellent seafood we have here in Galicia, Galician veal is also in great demand. Veal from Galicia has many qualities and more than lives up to the high demands of our clients. The wood from the holm oak, which comes from Salamanca and Extremadura, is very good and long-lasting. The wood is very clean and generates heat for longer. The oils and juices released by the meat fall onto the fire, creating a smoke, which leaves the meat with a delicious taste. Celta's backstory is a strange one, but it's a story that needs to be told, as it perfectly reflects the values of the city. It shows what the Galician people are all about and what being from Vigo means. Originally, there were two different clubs who sacrificed their individual identity to come together 
to create one football team. We have our own philosophy, passing the ball, playing well, playing with determination and attacking. Our matches are always great to watch and they're very enjoyable because we combine a lot of different elements and try to play good football always. And apart from that, we're always looking to score. Our youth players have always been the foundation to our success. And why am I saying this? Because when we didn't have a penny and were in huge debt, our youth academy graduates, Jelko, Joselu and Rodrigo, they were the ones who brought us money to pay those debts. And so little by little, we managed to achieve the financial stability that we've had until now. We got promoted to the first division with an average of eight homegrown players in the first team. And after our first year, we stayed in the top flight also with seven or eight of those players. Vlado has a lot of stories to tell since coming to Celta. He's a great player and a great person. And thanks to that, he stayed with us for such a long time and will stay for many years to come. He's a true representative of what football is about. In many games, we still hear people chant, Vlado, Vlado, Vlado. It's pretty impressive. I came here to spend five or six years and I've spent 26. I don't know. I just love Vigo. The city, the foods, the climate. It's the best city because it's unique. People are really, really nice here, especially the club employees. And since I used to be a football player, I understand them a little bit better than maybe some other people who weren't. Lado is an extraordinary person, although sometimes he can be a little absent-minded. We were going to play at Samamez, and Gudul was late. So when we started discussing the situation, the coach said, well, Vlado, have you understood everything? Yes, yes, coach, of course I have. Do you remember where you have to be during the corner kick, the coach said, and he goes, yes, uh, where well, I won't cause any trouble. <laughs> Training used to be more basic and general. If you needed more specific and individual preparation as a player, you didn't get it. It was general. Now things have changed. Sometimes players train according to individual programs. If they need to focus on muscle strength, they have it. If they need an individual diet, they get it. How many years has Edu been with us? Too many. And he's not done yet. We've had a lot of coaches and technical staff, but all of them have always admired our kit manager, and everybody has always wanted to work with him.
My job is to make sure players feel as comfortable as possible during training sessions and games. I have to prepare their kits and everything must be ready before their arrival. I try to do my job as best as I can. I want to make sure they have everything they need so that they can focus only on football. This is a boot tree. We have two of these. We use them when players get new boots to stretch them. In the past, we used to carry out this procedure directly on the foot, but not anymore. You can open it up a bit. Depends on what you need to be as comfortable as possible when you put the boot on that way. It helps you avoid blisters and other foot problems. I do the letters on the shirts. After the game, I have to count back the kits I get from the players. There are players like Iago Aspas who everybody wants to change shirts with. So sometimes a player might need up to 100, 120, 80 or 90 shirts. We have extraordinary fans who tend to suffer a lot. The team has suffered a lot throughout its history, but we were always there. I often talk about the fact that despite having lost a great many games at Balaidos over the last few years, there hasn't been a single jeer or whistle at the stadium. Our fans know where we come from. They know what we can aspire to and they live with this idea. They never stop supporting us. They're always there for us, through thick and thin. A la Celta. A la Celta. A la Celta. A la Celta. Con el corazón. I've been a member for 52 years. Eight people in my family are members. My parents have been members. Now our children and our grandchildren are. So we've got four generations of season ticket holders. A la Celta. Long live Yago Aspas and long live Celta. Look, I'll show you my tattoo. Delta is the best team in the world and the best in Galicia too. Joy, sadness, euphoria, sacrifice, feelings, just everything. Vamos a la Celta, siempre. La vamos a ganar. A la Celta! If Celta wins La Liga, I get married to Celta. It would be a dream come true. I would take a bath in Plaza America. <laughs> I just want Celta to win, and after that, I don't care who wins. <laughs> <laughs>